Welcome dear students. Today in this video lecture we are going to learn chapter number 5 that is a two phase heat transfer. In that we are discussing the topic that is boiling. These are the learning objective of this video lecture that after attending these sessions student will be able to differentiate between the evaporation and boiling phenomena. Student is familiar with the different types of boiling student can be develop a good understanding of the boiling curve that is a pool boiling then student will be able to differentiate the different regimes of boiling corresponding to the different regions on the boiling curve and lastly student will be able to calculate the heat flux and its critical value associated with the nuclear boiling and various correlation so let's start first we discuss the evaporation and boiling and the difference between that two. So evaporation occurs at the liquid vapor interface when the vapor pressure is less than the saturation pressure of a liquid at a given temperature. So see here this is the water is at the 20 degree centigrade and it is situated in the atmosphere means the atmospheric pressure is acting on this water and the amount of the water vapor which is evaporated from the surface that is a liquid and gas interface or liquid and vapor interface so this phenomena occurs at the water which is at 20 degrees centigrade as we all know that at atmospheric pressure the saturation temperature is 100 degree but here it is occurs at 20 degree and the pressure is one atmospheric now we we'll discuss about a boiling boiling occurs at a solid liquid interface when the liquid is brought into the contact with the surface maintained at a temperature sufficiently above the saturation temperature of liquid so we know that at atmospheric pressure saturation temperature of water or the boiling temperature of water is 100 degree centigrade so if you maintain the temperature of this hot surfaces that is a solid surfaces and if you come the water in contact with these surfaces then water is boiling means the boiling is started in the interface between the solid and liquid so this is a phenomena which is happens at solid liquid interface and here the phenomena of evaporation is occurs at the liquid vapor interface that is the main difference as well as the another difference main important is the vapor pressure is less than the saturation pressure and here the temperature of the solid surface is sufficiently higher than the saturation temperature of a liquid at given pressure so this is the main difference between that two and here also you can see this is a heating element which is maintained at 110 degree centigrade and the water is saturated at 100 degree and our atmospheric pressure that is a one atmospheric pressure so the bubble creations are happens from the surfaces and this phenomena is known as a boiling so this is the boiling which is occurs over here now we are moving towards the finding out the heat flux in the boiling phenomena so q dot boiling which is equals to h into ts minus t sat equals to h into delta t excess delta t excess means for the boiling we need a higher temperature than the saturation temperature the amount of temperature difference between the surface and the saturation is known as the excess temperature let's say for the example if my ts is 110 and the saturation of a boiling is 100 degree centigrade for the water then t excess is becomes a 10 degree centigrade and these terms we are utilizing for plotting a pool boiling curve and that's why it is very important now we are going to classify the types of boiling so boiling phenomena can be classified into four groups according to different criteria. so boiling is known as a pool boiling in absence of bulk fluid flow means if the boiling phenomena are happens in a steady flow or the steady fluid that is known as a pool boiling when the fluids are in motion and the boiling phenomena are happens that kind of boiling is known as the flow boiling so one it is a steady it is called as a pool boiling it is like a pool of water and we are supplying the heat and boilings are happens and here suppose a water is flowing through the help of pump and we are heating from the outside of the pipe 
So this kind of boiling phenomena are called as a flow boiling in which the fluids are in motion and in pool boiling the fluid is at rest positions. So this is the two types of uh, boiling. Then another two types is a subcooled and saturated. Subcooled boiling the when the temperature of the main body of the liquid is below the saturation temperature then it is cooled as a subcooled. Suppose water is a, here it is at 80 degree and here the water is at 100 degree the surface temperature of the solid surface temperature is 107 degree centigrade in both the cases the boiling happens over here in which the water temperature is 80 degree means it is less than the saturation temperature that's why it is called as a sub cool boiling and saturation means your bulk fluid temperatures or the water temperature is 100 degree which is a saturation temperature at one atmospheric pressure and that's why it is called as the saturated boilings so this is the difference between the subcool and saturated so here we have discussed the four different types of boiling one is pool boiling that is uh, fluid at, at steady conditions flow boiling means bulk fluid is having a motions Subcooled boiling means the temperature of the bulk fluid is less than the saturation temperature. Saturated boiling means the temperature of the bulk fluid is at saturated point. Now after that we are going in the depth discussions of pool boiling. So pool boiling means the fluid is at rest conditions and we are supplying a heating from the bottom of the surfaces. So here in pool boiling regimes we have the different different types of regimes are there so first regimes means as here the formula is given that is q dot boiling which is equals to h ts minus t sat so the whole phenomena is depends on the t excess so how much temperature difference is there suppose we take the water at 100 degree centigrade in one pan and we start the heating of this pan from the bottom side Let's say the temperature is 103 degree centigrade. So the heat is transferred between this solid surface and the liquid and that is a T excessive is the 3 degree centigrade in this case. So the heat transfer occurs that is called as a natural convection of boiling means boilings are there but it is a trans heat transfer is take place by the natural convections. When you are increasing this delta T excess like let's say is 110 and 100 degrees centigrade means at that time the small amount of bubbles are formed which cannot be go beyond the surfaces it can be dissolved to reach towards the interface and when further you are increasing the temperature this kind of slug formations are there it is called as a vapor pocket or slug slug formation is there and from the nuclear boiling this kind of the film generation is there so in between this uh, uh, nuclear boiling and the film boiling there is a transition phase are there and this kind of uh, slug or we can say is a vapor, uh, we can say that vapor pocket is generated in between that two and that's why it is called as a transition boiling and last one is film boiling so now we go for the pool boiling curve and student this curve is very important from the exam point of view sometimes it is asked in seven marks in gtu examinations so here for the pool boiling curve we are taking the Q boiling means a heat flux on the Y axis and the excess temperature on the X axis. We start with the 1 degree and we are going more than the 1000 degrees. So let's say the cause is forms from 0 or say O, O to A is there and this region is a natural convection. Up to this 5 degree centigrade only the natural convection are happens and in this way as you are increasing the heat flux your temperature is also increases and you get this kind of curve that is called as O to A then from A to B and C means the region is A to C which is known as the nuclear boiling in that the bubble formations are happens and here C up to A to B the bubble collapse in the liquid it cannot be reached to this free interface or the free surfaces when your heat flux is further increases and your delta T is also gets increases after the 10 degree the bubble is rise to the free surfaces or the interface so this is a two region in between A to C that is A to B and B to C and after reaches to this maximum heat flux further if you are increasing the heat supply then the delta T is increases but heat flux is going to the decreases because 
after nuclear boiling there is a big kind of pockets or vapor pocket is generated and which is a made up of a gas so gas is having a low thermal conductivity and that's why the rate of heat transfer or rate of heat transfer is decreases because this vapor pocket is generating the resistance and then after the d point again if we are increasing the heat flux then again it is going to the e points and here it is a transition means the nuclear boiling is ending over there and the vapor pocket is start to generate from the c point up to the d and after d points there is a one vapor film is generated and this kind of the boiling is called as a film boiling and this film boiling starts from the point d and it is going to the e and here the c point is very important it is a critical point or it is called as a maximum heat flux later on in this lecture we are discussing more about this heat flux so now we are moving towards the depth discussions in the point o2a and in this uh, space the liquid is sli slightly superheated because our temperature is more than the saturation that's why it is called as a superheated and the state over here is called as a metastable states and as we have discussed the small small uh, bubbles are forming after the a and up to o2a there is no bubble formations only the natural convections between the surface and the fluids are happens after the, after this uh, a there is a small amount of the bubbles are form as you can see from this figure the small bubbles are there and bubbles are moving towards the upper surface but it cannot be cross or it cannot be reach to the free surfaces be before that it is collapse so it is happens in between 0 to a and this region is known as isolated bubbles because it cannot be reached to the free surface or interface in region in, in the b2c it is called as a continuous column of vapor means one bubble is formed it is moves towards the free surface suddenly again second bubble is formed at same place and it is moved so it is like a column of bubbles are there and it is moving from the solid surface to the free surface and that's why this is called as a continuous column of vapor now we are discussing about the c point after point b the heat flux increases at a lower rate and increasing the delta t and reach to the maximum at point c the heat flux at this point is called as a critical or the maximum heat flux and it is a prime engineering importance means the c point is a very important point for the designing of any equipment now we are discussing about transition boiling when the delta t axis is increases past point c the heat flux is decreases as you can see from c the graph is start towards the downward direction which shows that the delta t is increases and the q boiling is decreases and this is happens because the large fractions of heater surface is covered by a vapor which is act as a insulation you can see here this is the phenomena happens and here the vapor pocket is generated in the transition boiling the regime both in nucleate as well as film boiling partially occurs it means in some of the region there is a bubble formation is there and some amount of the vapor formation means a vapor big vapor pocket is also there so in these conditions operation in the transition boiling regime which is also called as a unstable film boiling regimes is avoided in practices for water the transition boiling occurs over the excess temperature range from 30 degree to about 120 degree means from 30 degree excess temperature to the 120 degree centigrade it is there for the transition boiling student this boiling curve is for water at atmospheric pressures and that's why the delta x is start from 101 so for the water it is the range of transition boiling start from the delta t axis from 30 degree centigrade to the 120 and after 120 degree centigrade the film boiling starts on vapor film 100 percent which is cover the solid surfaces so heater surface is completely covered by a continuous stable vapor film and the point d where the heat flux is reached to a minimum which is also known as Leiden's force point this presence of vapor film between the heater surface and the liquid is responsible for 
तो लो हीट ट्रांसफर रेट इन द फिल्म बॉइलिंग रीजन हीट ट्रांसफर रेट इंक्रीजेस विद इंक्रीजेस एक्सेसिव टेंपरेचर ड्यू टू रेडिएशन टू द लिक्विड्स मींस आफ्टर दिस 126 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड द 100 परसेंट सॉलिड सरफेस इज कवर विथ अ वेपर एंड इट इज कंटिन्यूस वेपर फिल्म इज फॉर्म एट द पॉइंट डी एंड आफ्टर दैट ड्यू टू द रेडिएशन हीट ट्रांसफर बिटवीन दिस वेपर फिल्म एंड द सॉलिड सरफेस इज again q dot boiling is increases up to the point e now the burnout phenomena this is the prime engineering concept which is used for design of equipment in the two phase heat transfer a typical boiling process does not follow the boiling curve beyond the c means after the c it is normal process cannot be follow for the boiling when the power applied to heated surface exceed towards the value of point c even slightly the surface is surface temperature increases suddenly to the point e see here this is a direct line if you plot the horizontal line from c and it is going towards the e so this is the there and if you go over here it is near, near about 30 degree centigrade and here it is more than 1000 so when you apply the certain more amount of heat flux after the point c it is directly go over here and the burn out phenomena is are happen so in engineering practices every equipments design lower than the point c means after this point the burn out phenomena and why this phenomena is called as a burn out because however the surface temperature corresponding to e point is beyond the melting point of an heater material and burn out occurs and that's why the point c on the boiling curve is called as a burn out and this flux according to this is called as a burn out heat flux so most of the boiling heater transfer equipment in practice is operate slightly below the q max means slightly lower than the c point to avoid any disturbed burn out phenomena so this is all about the boiling curve now we are going to discuss about the various correlations which is used in the nucleate boiling phenomena so this is the correlations uh, which is used for the nucleate boiling that is q nucleate equals to mu l hfg g into rho l minus rho v divided by sigma to the power 1 by 2 in another bracket it is cpl ts minus t set upon cs f hfg into pr to the power n whole to the power 3 here mu l is a viscosity of liquid hfg is enthalpy of vaporization g is a gravitational acceleration rho l is a density of liquid rho v is a density of vapor c sigma is a surface tension of the vapor interface cpl is a specific heat of liquid ts is a surface temperature t sat is a saturation temperature cs is experimental constant that depends on the surface uh, fluid combinations and pr means a prandtl number and n is a experiment constant that depends on the different types of fluids and from the standard tables we can be able to calculate the different properties and t set from the uh, steam table so in this way you can be able to find it out the q nucleate boiling using the given correlations these are the some of the standard values are given for the surface tensions for the different uh, liquids like a water ammonia butane like that so this kind of standard data is available in the heat transfer data book and you can use this kind of data to solve the numerical which is given for the nu nucleate boiling and this is the q max using this equation we can be able to find it out the q max according to point c on the or that is called as a critical heat flux on the pool boiling curve so here it is given ccr hfg into sigma g rho square v in the bracket rho l minus rho v to whole to the power 1 by 4 where c ccr is a constant whole value depends on the higher geometry but generally it is taken as a point 15 the chf chf means a critical heat flux it depends on the fluid heating surface combination as well as the viscosity thermal conductivity and specific heat of the fluid or the liquid chf is increased with the pressure up to about 1/3 of the critical pressures and then start to decrease and becomes a zero at the critical pressures so this is the table and these are the values you need to use for solving the problem basis on the critical heat flux if it is asking the 
examinations thank you thank you for attending this video lecture thank you